The waters of our planet have always been filled with many predators, some of them taking on very obscure shapes and forms. Fish like the hammerhead shark or the fang tooth belong to the most strange one today. However, if we travel back to the waters of the Paleozoic, specifically the Devonian and Carboniferous, we find fish that are not only obscure, but downright ugly and demonic. A general consensus for these times could be, the uglier the fish, the more vicious it is. Rhizidus and Tancleostis are perhaps the best examples of this. But who takes the crown for ancient monster fish? Is it the stealthy river hunter or the cannonball with jaws of the open sea? Let's find out. First off, Rhizidus and Tancleostis never actually coexisted, but this video is about speculative paleontology. First, we'll have them travel to neutral ground. Rhizidus lived in the rivers, Dancleostes in the seas, that's why we move to estuaries, which is the transition zone between the two domains. What the hell are you? The name's Uncle Dunkel, king of the waters. Ah, you think you're a king, but you're small. Watch it. Get down to the ring if you dare. And then I'ma kick your ass. Wait, what's that? I hear strange music coming up. Hello and welcome to the battle arena. These two will be battling it out for king of the waters. Let's move to our fighters. In the red corner we have Rhizodus from the rivers. And in the blue corner from the open seas, Dancleostius. Okay, okay. I hope you enjoyed that intro. Rhizodus was a large, elongated fish that appeared in the Upper Carboniferous period in Europe, Russia and potentially North America. The type species is Rhizodus sipiarti. The genus name Rhizodus means root tooth, referring to the fish's long, slender fangs, which resemble roots. The discovery of Rhizodus was an important milestone in the study of fish evolution, because Rhizodus was the largest freshwater fish of all time. Taxonomically, Rhizodus belongs to the Rhizodon teeter, or more commonly known, the Rhizodonts. Rhizodus had an elongated slender body with a maximum length of up to 7 meters or 23 feet and weighing up to 1.5 metric tons. It possessed two 22 centimeters or 8.6 inch long fangs. The remaining teeth were small and conical and were suitable for crushing prey. We don't have specific data on Rhizodus' bite force, but the general consensus is that Rhizodus could break bones with its strong and robust jaws. So let's speculate on a conservative 6000 Newton bite force. However, Rhizodus maybe didn't even need a bone breaking bite force, as he could potentially have used the legendary death roll to dismember prey. Rhizodons are generally considered to have very strong pectoral fins, with some of them potentially even attacking land animals. Dancleostis is one of the largest representatives of the placoderms, also known as armored fish. Dancleostis' type species is Dancleostis tyrelli. The genus name Dancleostis comes from American paleontologist David Dunkel, combined with the Greek word ostian meaning bone, his name therefore meaning Dunkel's bone. Dancleostis lived in the seas of the Upper Devon in North America, Africa and Europe. Its body structure was generally very bulky, with the skull being anywhere from 18-30% to 30 of its total body length. Dancleostius comes in at a maximum length of 4.1 meters or 13.5 feet. Even though it is much shorter than the Rhizodus, Dancleostius' upper weight estimate is 1 metric ton, giving it a very bulky appearance. Additionally, Dancleostius possess big bony fangs, most likely used to crush its prey. Some believe Dancleostius could bite as hard or even harder than 5300 newtons. Let's make the range 5300 to 7500 as there have been suggestions for higher bite forces too. To put that into perspective, that is about 1.5 times to 2 times stronger than a Nile crocodile. Dancleostis was covered in dermal bone forming armor plates across its skull and the front half of its trunk. This armor is often described as being over 2-3 to three inches or 5.1-7.6 to 7 .6 centimeters thick. But this is only across the thickened nuchal plate at the back of the skull. Across the rest of the body, 
the armor is generally much thinner, only about 0.33 to 1 inch or 0.84 to 2.54 cm in thickness. Dunkleos this is also known to have preyed upon its own kind. I imagine it living the Mosasaurus lifestyle, before Mosasaurus even could, so from now on let's call it the style of Uncle Donkel. First of course is the size. Rhizodus is a heavyweight that competes in size with great whites. Because Rhizodus is elongated and slender, it helps him being pretty agile for his size. Rhizodus also might have been able to use the death roll because of its body shape, which could be a plus. 6000 Newton speculated bite force should also be enough to do some damage. Dunkleosteus had a higher bite force, especially compared to body weight. Dunkle's battle experience is better, as it is used to fight other armored fish. The bite force is a definitive advantage, as the upper estimates are very high and Dunkleosteus may have even cracked through the shell of ammonoids. Dunkle has thick armor at the back of its skull, making it potentially invulnerable at this spot. As Dunkleosteus is smaller, his opponent will need to get close to land a successful attack. Meaning Dunkle could maybe just wait for his opponent to get in close and then strike. Rhizodus may have had plate-like scales, but they were probably insufficient armor. The lower bite force is also the obvious disadvantage. Welcome back, Captain Obvious. Yes, I am! Dunkleosteus was way smaller and relatively chunky, which may have had negative effects on its agility as well. The use of the death roll seems really unlikely for Dunkleosteus because of its body shape. Dunkle also had insufficient armor for this fight, except for the back of its skull. Rhizodus and Dunkleosteus meet in an estuary, a domain not particularly familiar to both of them as there is salt and fresh water flowing into each other. Rhizodus being bigger than Dunkle seems to have no fear as it charges in, yet the ram attack doesn't do much to Dunkleosteus and his bulky body. After a few seconds, Dunkleosteus is back on 100%. It tries to charge now, scratching the Rhizodus with its fangs enough to injure Rhizodus, yet not a life-threatening injury. Dunkle realizes Rhizodus' swiftness, as he not only nearly dodged its attack, but is out of sight. Rhizodus speeds up from below, trying to grab Dunkle with its teeth and perform the death roll. He couldn't death roll the bulky Dunkle, but his teeth left significant damage. He charges again and again, and the Dunkle Osteus, slowly but steadily, dies from blood loss. 60% go to the Rhizodus. Why so close, you might ask? Because there is uncertainty about the likes of bite force and speed in both these animals, so I think it could technically go either way. Rhizodus wins for me because he is bigger overall and could also be significantly more agile with its lander body. What do you think about this outcome? Should it have been Rhizodus or Dunkleosteus? Let me know in the comments below and leave a like if you want to see more speculative paleontology. You can also subscribe for my dinosaur prehistory content. Check out Twitter for my dinosaur stuff and Instagram for fitness stuff. Links in the description. And with that, I wish you a splendid day or evening. Goodbye.